Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 23rd, 2022, current on 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for two more tropical systems to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of days. We have a storm alert out there, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that there's a couple of things occurring today. First of all, in the tropical main development region, we have Invest Area 90L located several hundred miles to the west of the Cabo Verde Islands at this point. Now, development chances have significantly decreased with this system because of the lack of convection and just the very hostile conditions that are expected across the basin over the next couple of days. But we do have a new area of disturbance here by NHC today. We can see on the tropical weather outlook that, again, we have Invest Area 90L still does have at least some potential for development as it approaches portions of the West Atlantic here. But then also back further towards the Cabo Verde Islands and just off the coast of Africa, we have a new system today with a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next five days. I mean, a tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa will be moving westward and may have a little bit more favorable conditions to work with over the next couple of days. If we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery for Invest Area 90L, we noticed that today really not much to talk about in terms of any organized convection. Just a couple of lone thunderstorm cell towers over here, but really other than that, there's absolutely nothing going on. We noticed that the very dry, stable air over here, keeping things nice and quiet. This has been basically the third active stretch, the, the third most stretch um, in history since the satellite era of not having any tropical cyclones, any named storms. Uh, and I believe that has been going on for the past 50 days. We haven't had a named system, I think, since the beginning of July, I believe. Uh, probably longer than that. So we are in quite a very drought of named storms so far. If we take a look here at uh, kind of the more zoomed out look at the water vapor satellite imagery today, we notice that much of the same is occurring across our system. All this black here, this indicates from very dry, stable air to the north, not really allowing for much in the way of organized, uh, really, thunderstorm activity to take place here. But look at the GFS relative humidity here. This is the 060 Ron Val for 8 p.m. this evening. We notice that we have all of this brown here. This indicates some very dry, stable air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. Now, there is actually some low-level humidity here, low-level moisture. We notice that there is actually a decent moist pocket here associated with 90L, but the problem is this dry air keeps funneling in, and the relative humidity is never really able to rise above 70%, which is a really good threshold for tropical cyclone formation. And that's going to remain the problem over the next couple of days. And in fact, you can almost see here the outline of this tropical upper trosopheric trough right here, digging all of this dry air into portions of the, the subtropics and then funneling into the Atlantic. And we notice that, you know, by about day five, we have another burst of dry air that's trying to, you know, basically pinch into the MDR. Now, in the next few days, if we look at the vorticity, the low-level vorticity here, so the spin in the atmosphere 5,000 or about uh, 5,000 feet off the ground, we notice that there is a new tropical wave that is expected to develop here and move off the coast of Africa. And then this will be moving near the Cabo Verde Islands within the next five days or so, where development is certainly possible. The GFS here goes for some type of tropical cyclone formation uh, in the MDR here by about day five. This is the five-day period. And we notice that we have a tropical cyclone here, but we also have this thing uh, kind of piquing our interest to kind of the west here of the Lesser Antilles. And this is actually associated with a cold pool that is developing over portions of South America that will lift northward. And this actually increases low level vorticity in the atmosphere and help to, is really helping to generate convergence at the surface and that's needed <clears throat> for thunderstorms to kind of develop so we'll see if that actually goes on to develop here and again there is some hints here that this might be a system to watch as this kind of uh, tries to develop there in the caribbean and then eventually makes its way into the central caribbean we'll see if that actually holds but we notice that the gfs doesn't really do a whole lot with it and then two other systems here we, we notice that this is our system right now and then another system out here. So we'll see what happens. Now, 
the GFS ensembles aren't really doing too much with it. This is actually that system that we've been taught that we were just talking about in the Central Caribbean. We notice by day five, though, there isn't really a lot going on down here in the MDR. There is some uh, members that do hint on a potential storm that will be forming, but not significantly. The European forecast model, much of the same thing, but its evolution is a bit different. We notice that again, we kind of have this dry air that busts off here because there's a very strong wave back behind here. Now, uh, the European has kind of this notorious thing where it has uh, systems that are way too strong over land. And we kind of see how that is because immediately after really getting over water, this is a tropical cyclone on the 31st of August. And then by September 2nd, you got a hurricane in there. Not really so sure that's going to happen. So this might be overdoing the push of dry air over here because then it just gets blasted into this system. But there's at least some opportunity for development before conditions might become hostile once again. But the European ensembles, it's kind of forecasting much of the same thing. Overall, some weak members in here, but we'll see how that kind of develops. Again, looking at the upper level wind environment at this time, not particularly the most favorable. We've got this tropical upper tropospheric trough here, this big upper level low cutting a lot of wind shear across portions of the western part of the MDR. So not really the most favorable look, but we'll see if that starts to kind of a change over the next several forecast runs but again either way it does seem like we will have at least one system to potentially be talking about what could become invest area 91l over the next couple of days now focusing real quick on texas and the flooding threat that we have seen across portions of the deep south uh, this is the quantitative precipitation forecast based on radar uh, the estimate based on radar over the past about 12 hours we have seen some very significant rainfall across portions of Texas. Now that has begun to clear out, but there's still this general overall cloudiness. And some of the spin here in the mid-levels, this is actually partially associated with Invest 98L. If you remember, 98L kind of traversed this area. It kind of got caught up and absorbed in something else and then kind of just you know moved its way back here. This isn't necessarily all 98L's entity, but it is at least somewhat of the same entity that brought that rainfall to portions of South Texas just about a week ago now. Uh, but we noticed that some of the rainfall amounts here over five inches in spots, seven inches down here, eight inches actually across portions of South Texas here. Uh, so there's been a swath of very heavy rainfall across portions really from about Houston all the way through Jackson, Mississippi, Shreveport, Louisiana. Again, that flooding rain fall threat will continue. You notice that there is at least some precipitation still being reported in the Dallas area. Again, not a lot of rainfall uh, on the back end of this, but certainly this rainfall threat will be spreading towards the east over the next day or two and could bring some heavy rainfall to portions of Mississippi and Alabama, even portions of southern Tennessee as well. So we'll kind of continue to monitor the progress of that. But other than that, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.